Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and um, we're going to be talking about the me, the possibility, the me, the possibility of me being wrong. Coming up next. All right. That's what we're doing today. Hope you're doing well. Pop a comment. I'm excited. All these like, how you doing? Sorry. I always pick on the the uh, <clears throat> cool kid preachers. Um, that's kind of what this is about, actually. Now, I'm not infallible, just right off the bat, right? I don't think I'm better than somebody else or something else. Now, obviously, you can only watch this video and either know that, believe me or not. If you know me, you're obviously going to know that. But it's a weird thing to even say because as soon as you start talking about yourself and humility and everything else, you know, stuff falls out the window real quick. So I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm so humble. I'm not proud, proudful. Oh, trust me, I'm proud. I'm, I, I am. I, I, uh, I have pride <laughs> bound up in my heart for sure. But the spirit is working on me and he's cutting that out and removing. It. And that's what sanctification, right? That's the whole point. At least not, well, not the whole point, but a lot of the point in the Christian life. God is fitting us for heaven, as it were. And so keep that in somewhere in your mind. Um, I know a lot of people watch regularly, and I appreciate that so much. And I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, Y'all drop comments and likes and probably shares and other things. I can't tell who shares, of course, but uh, I appreciate when you share. The goal of this channel ultimately is, is the, the mantra is contra mundum pro mundo. I'm Richard against the world. Richard contra mundum. And it's just kind of, you know, my handle, whatever. And the whole point is to be against the world for the world's sake. So Wednesday, I did a video on Andy Stanley. Last week, I did a video on Julie Royce and John MacArthur scandal. I've talked about other people. I don't know what the percentage is. I'm not really going to look. I guess I can. Um, but I wanted to talk about, today, I wanted to talk about the Supreme Court justice uh, and how she's just not at all qualified if she can't understand what a woman is, not even close, right? Um, I wanted to talk about some more of the Julie Royce, John MacArthur thing, just kind of have some touch-ups and also look at some of Julie Royce theology. I also wanted to possibly talk about the Dave Rubin baby and how conservatives are falling all over themselves. And it's like, what are you conserving? Like, what's the point? You're just now anti-leftist and anti-woke. You're not conservative. Conserving is conserving. <laughs> you're, you're taking something that is as of old, of tradition, of nat nature, natural, whatever, and conserving it. Now, obviously, there's been ups and downs, and a lot of leftists would argue, well, what are you conserving, or what point, and everything else? Well, ultimately, it should be God's design for life, for the family, for children, for work, uh, and all that, and not just anti-leftist. That being said, I did want to do that. I did want to do that. And I, I've gotten a couple comments. Um, and, you know, you can't please everybody, right? You only need a 51% margin to win most things. So out of 100 people, you only need 51 people that like you. The 49 could despise you, and it, quote, unquote, doesn't matter. I want to be liked by everybody, but I know I'm not going to be liked by everybody, and that's fine, because ultimately, I'm serving Christ. Ultimately, Jesus is better. That's part of my flesh, and I joke, and I've joked in the past, that's part of my identity, being a people pleaser. But I'm in the pulpit, and I don't preach. If you're ever curious, you can go check out sermons. I don't preach mean. I'm not trying to be cruel. But I preach what the Bible says, and a lot of times that runs counter to what our culture and even the current church says. So I care more about what God thinks and what he says than what other people think. Now, obviously, we should be speaking with, you know, as seasoned with salt, being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, etc. And I need to work on that for sure. I definitely do. I'm not apologizing to anything because I didn't do anything wrong. But that being said, I'm going to explain why I do what I do when I look at these videos and probably why most people, uh, several of my YouTube colleagues and others, uh, and you'll see quickly how, how much, not only does this happen, holding, holding for coffee. Oh, coffee's our loan sponsor, just coffee. I do like good coffee though. Usually South American coffee is a little bit more warm, lighter roast, not darker roast. I used to do dark roast way back when. It's also black. Although sometimes I do cream and sugar, maple syrup, and all sorts of other stuff. But most of the time it's black. Anyway, uh, if you were curious, probably weren't curious. 
when we look at someone, uh, you might hear birds. I'm hearing birds. You're probably going to hear birds. It's going to be a fun video. I'm in an attic, so my studio is an attic. <laughs> and there's birds outside, although it's very early in the morning. Anyway, I'm just getting all sorts of distracted. People correct each other. And we live in an age of hypersensitivity, of attacking and misrepresentation, and you don't understand this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, the, again, there was one comment, um, and it's public, so the person obviously thinks that, and that's fine, you can think that. I mean, great, I leave the comments open because I want conversation. Hiding the leftist, leftist ideals, people in the left or drift of the church don't want conversation. I'm not in that camp. Let's be sharpened as one man sharpens another, so is iron sharpening iron, right? There are multiple places that I am not perfect. Well, here's a newsflash. You're not perfect either. Right? We're all in process. And God, especially if you're a Christian, has you where you are for a purpose, where you live, who you're married to, who you're not married, your children, grandchildren, your education, everything. doesn't mean you stay there either. And a lot of people kind of get this fatalistic mentality, depending on you know what type of theology you, you hold. But at the end of the day, we have this, like, we can go in this, you know, the classic pendulum swinging. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to be using the gifts that God has given me. I want to use the desire that he has placed in me and then press that further. Right? And that's why I do this channel, because I have a background in design and media. And I worked in movies and film a long, long time ago. Nothing like major, so you're not really going to find much, although there is some stuff online. But uh, the point is this is free, right? Now it does take time. It usually takes a few hours to do a video each time. But it's it's calculated to a degree to figure out what would be best for you all and how to sharpen you, right? Because I want you to be against the world but for the world's sake. So the Dave Rubin stuff, the Supreme Court stuff, Julie Roy stuff, all these things are currently happening. And we need to be constantly, because we have headlines flashing at us routinely, Twitter handles, people on Facebook, Instagram fit photos, da 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 da, billboards everywhere, all claiming our attention. So I appreciate you for a moment taking some time with me. So I'm going to read Jude. I'm going to read Jude, and I'm going to show you how much of what I do, and it's not even all I do. I mean, I just did a video yesterday with Russell Brand. Russell Brand, <laughs> no, Lee Brand. Excuse me, Lee Brand. Russell Brand is a uh, somebody else entirely. Uh, Doctor Lee Brand fantastic gentleman, really nice guy. And he's, he's just as humble or more so behind the scenes as he was on camera. Uh, so check that out if you haven't. It's, it's up here and probably going to be in the back uh, on the end of this video as well. Because it was a live conversation, so we had some question and answers as well. I don't usually do Contra Talks live. I usually record those and then post those Saturday, but Thursday was a good day to do it. I usually do lives on Thursday, and it just, you know, the stars aligned. So check that out. But I have a bunch of other things that aren't just a critique of Andy Stanley or John MacArthur or somebody like that, Stephen Verdict. So, Jude. Because ultimately we need to see what is happening in the Bible. Because again, I'm a Christian. Most people who watch are Christians, I'm sure, I believe. We should want to do what the scripture exhibits, what it commands, what Jesus says, what the apostles say, not just what Jesus, but also the apostles, because they're writing God's word, right? And it's it ultimately, you know, the red letter classic, it's all red letters <laughs> in one sense. It's all God's word. Jesus is God, God, Isaiah, Jeremiah. But somebody like an Andy Stanley tells people routinely in the comment, I'll read it. Oh, you're misrepresenting. Oh, you're not understanding. You're missing. But you're missing what church is, friend. What is a pastor? What is church? Is it an outreach or is it the gathered body of believers or is it something else? Well, unashamedly, it's the gathered body of believers. But Andy Stanley seems to believe that it's something different, that he's always talking about people, people, people. And, oh, you don't really have to believe that. I believe it, but you don't have to believe it. You know, I believe the Bible. It doesn't really matter. Inerrancy, et cetera, et cetera. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. And I'm going to stand on that because not only does historically that doesn't bode well, but also you will, you don't do that with other things, right? You don't do that with, you know, maybe letters that your grandparents wrote, wrote you before they died, you know, or a book, Huckleberry Finn, right? A fictional book. You're not going to be like, well, some of this is just a little, you know, Shakespeare. 
other things. Now, those are just plays. What about histories from, you know, 400 years ago? The War for Independence. You're not going to read some of it and be like, yeah, this, this really doesn't matter. You don't need to believe that. Just believe in George Washington. Well, how did George Washington become what he was? I could go on and on with the examples. I'm not going to. Jude 1. There's only one chapter. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation. Honestly, I was actually going to look at uh, 2 Timothy, the whole book, uh, today. And I would say the Spirit just showed me Jude instead and brought that to mind. Didn't speak to me, just spoke to my heart. And so I'm doing Jude. Of course, it's shorter because I know I'm long-winded. Um, but read 2 Timothy also. And then go back and read all the other epistles and even the Gospels, especially people who are critical of, of being polemical, of, of attacking or correcting people. The whole Bible <laughs> is a corrective. Okay? Some, far more than others. I mean, Elijah and the prophets of Baal is a great example of that. Some, it's far more subtle. <clears throat> but the whole Bible, because we're in sin. In fact, all of Paul's letters, by the way, were a response to something happening. I mean, you have not read the Bible very long, person who dropped the comment, and other people who have been critical of me or other people watching or, or YouTubers or whatever. Oh, you can't. Why don't you just preach the Bible? We are preaching the Bible. Okay? This is what the Bible does. It corrects because we're in sin or that person's in error. That person's in sin. This is an issue. We need to be constantly brought back. We're like sheep, right? Straying. All of us. Each one to his own way. No, 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 we need to be brought back. The shepherd's crook, hooked, grabbed around the neck and just lovingly brought back by the shepherd of our souls. And how does he do that? Could he do that in a way of, you know, I found it necessary to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly. Different translation coming out. Contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Critics, I'm talking to you. Do you see this? I'm going to do this, but actually I'm going to write about this because certain people, who are these certain people? These are the Andy Stanleys of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. These are the Stephen Furtick's, the Joel Osteen's. And we correct them because they're the ones who are influential. I'm not influential almost at all. No, you know, there's some people who uh, take time to watch and, and, and comment. And I appreciate that. But I don't have a following any near as all the people I've just mentioned. Joyce Meyer, Beth Moore, on and on and on. These people are teaching false doctrine. Right? They're either women preachers doing all sorts of weird things. God's speaking to me, this and that. The Bible doesn't really mean this. You don't need to believe the Bible. This, 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 on and on and on and on. And why are they doing it? Ultimately, because of money. And the scripture says it's because of money, because of power. Now, I don't ultimately know their motives. Maybe they're just ignorant. But even still, they shouldn't be a Bible preacher, Bible teacher. Okay? You don't want some surgeon who's removing cancer in your lungs be like yeah i've done this one or two times i watched some videos on youtube blah 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 i i got the hang of this uh no 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 <laughs> i want somebody who has experience i want somebody who knows like well i had experienced it before i had lung cancer 10 years ago i i can do this this is why the whole idea of standpoint epistemology meaning the person's perspective is knowledge or they've experienced it therefore they can speak into it they can do it just because you experienced lung surgery doesn't mean you can perform lung surgery. Verse 5, now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus saved a people out of the land of Egypt. There it is, the Old Testament. If we unhitch the Old Testament that Andy Stanley has told us, and we're just focusing on him because this is the most recent video, and this is the comment that people are talking about, uh, or at least one person dropped and was like, oh, why are you doing this? He's just popular. You're just attacking him, blah, 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 blah. They start the comment with, I feel, in fact. I'll just read it real quick. It feels like you're trying to grow your channel by criticizing and attacking people. Well, feelings don't determine truth, friend. And no, I'm not trying to grow my channel. And if I was, so what? And if I'm not, so what? The point is these people, because Andy Stanley is very popular. He's very influential. I've already said that. The angels who do not stay in their own possession, but 
and authority, but left their proper dwelling. He has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness. Again, that is Genesis 6. So we're going back to Genesis and Exodus, or Exodus and Genesis. If we unhitch the Old Testament, that ain't going to do any good for us, is it? No. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah, cities around them, same ways. Uh, likewise, sexual immorality, pursue unnatural desire, serve as an example, undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Eternity matters, man. This is Eternity is at stake. I could have an entertainment channel. And sometimes my videos are entertaining, but that's not the goal of this channel. It's teaching, it's admonishing, it's, it's, it's lifting up, it's sharpening, it's encouraging others to walk by faith and not by sight, to put on the full armor of God and trust because Jesus is better. I hope this is helpful. I really do because if it's not, well, okay, fine. But it's helpful for some. Again, I'm talking to Christians. Because we're, we serve something higher, not the Republican Party, not conservatism, or not you know our family, or something like that, not the church, or the SBC, or something. I serve Christ, and I want to do what he calls me to do, and where he has me. I could sit and just only do pastoring, which is what I am. I'm a pastor, husband, and father. That's it. I could only, quote unquote, do that. And that would be great if I only did that. But I have been built in such a way to do and spin multiple plates at once. Sometimes my wife is like, you're doing too much. <laughs> Thank you, my love, because I do need you for that. Right? Husbands need wives. Wives need husbands. That's why we. That's why God designed marriage that way. So sometimes I can get a little carried away. I hope I'm not getting carried away. Yet, in like manner, these people also relying on dreams, sounds familiar, defile the flesh, reject authority, blaspheme the glorious ones. And when Michael the archangel, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume or pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people, listen to this. Again, people who are like, oh, you're just criticizing people. What is Jude doing? He's literally doing the same thing. Now, I could say a Georgia pastor, an influential pastor, and a lot of times you'll hear that from the pulpit because it's a mixed crowd and it's live and you know people want to be even more charitable. This is a little like the gloves are off. I still want to be charitable, at least on this channel. Some people are total jerks uh, or other things. And some people are super kind and they're just wishy-washy. This is not the time for wishy-washiness. This is not the time for spinelessness, okay? That time is over, and that time will come again where everything's back to quote-unquote normal, and you know whether it's 50 or 100 years from now, you can tell where my eschatology is, that ultimately people, we go in this cycle, in these waves. Right now, it's time of war. We're always in a spiritual war, but right now is in particular a war. But these people blaspheme. Notice he's calling out. They're blaspheming God. Andy Stanley, Stephen Furtick, Joel Osteen, all the popular people, the 20, 30 popular people that have massive platforms, they're not preaching the gospel by and large. Now, there's a handful that do, but most don't. They do not understand. They are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them. By the way, that is a very strong statement. Just like Paul writes to the Galatians, and he tells them, if anybody takes a different gospel, let them be doubly damned. Damned unto eternal destruction. That's a big deal. And I hope you see that. I hope, I hope you understand that. That's not, this isn't trivial. Okay? That's why, again, I can only speak for me, Why part of why I do this channel. Because Jesus is better. Him washing you and making you new and walking in the newness of life through sheer faith in him and no works of your own. That's the gospel. That's the true life in Christ. For they walked, again, talking about people, the way of Cain. What did Cain do? He killed his brother. <clears throat> they abandoned themselves for the sake of Balaam's error. Again, that's Balaam and his donkey, talking donkey. <clears throat> Perished in Korah's rebellion. That was where people, like 20,000 people, there was an earthquake and a bunch of people fell in because they were rebelling against the Lord. These are hidden reefs. Listen to this illustrative language, very specific at your love feasts, going through as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted. Wow. And I have, again, be discerning, please. 
see this and I, and take what the Bible says and not what I say or not what somebody else says, but look at what Jude says. Read it for yourself, please. And then compare this and say, is this person I'm listening to? Because this guy who commented is probably a you know Andy Stanley follower, probably doesn't go to a local church, maybe. But a lot of times you have the online people and they'll criticize those who are criticizing the online pastor. Meanwhile, they're not part of a local body. Got to be part of a local church, even if it's a cruddy local church. Make it better. There are hidden reefs in your love feast, meaning, you know, um, communion and, and Lord's Supper, that sort of thing. Not love feasts in some sort of weird sexual way. Not at all. That's not what's written there. That's not what it means. Waterless clouds. In the ancient world, you needed clouds to have water, right? We didn't have pipes. There were no pipes. You know, sure, there were aqueducts, but that's not the point. There's not ease of water like we have today. You want cloud, You want water? You need clouds with water in them. You don't want waterless clouds. Swept along by the winds, fruitless trees. You have a tree, it's nice, but I want you to produce something. That's why I like a garden. I'm planting a garden, by the way. Maybe I'll do some videos on that at some point just for fun. I don't like plants that just sit there. I want plants to produce something for me. Not just me. Twice dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea casting up their own foam of their shame. Wandering stars for whom the gloom of the utter darkness has been reserved forever. Oh, so so specific and just the pictures that are there he's writing to this people about these other people now does he say andy stanley and joel osteen and Stephen verdict tdj creflo dollar benny hen no but that's who he has in mind false teachers people bringing up doing things feeding themselves shepherds feeding themselves no shepherds are supposed to feed fathers are supposed to sacrifice for their families not the other way around Right, you're not king of your family. And this is why a lot of people hate the quote unquote patriarchy. Excuse me. It was also about these that Enoch, seventh generation from Adam, there you go, literal direct reading of Genesis, seven generations down from the first man, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with many ten thousand of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and convict all the ungodly of all their uh, all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way. And all the harsh things the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents. I mean, how many times do you have to be told not to complain? Especially as a child. All the time. Grumbling and complaining. Do all things without grumbling or complaining. It's a verse that often flies around our house. Because as children, and even as adults, we grumble. But what does it really do? All, it, all we want really is sympathy. But it doesn't solve the problem, does it? Following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed, boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. I mean, I just the stuff that I watch, and I don't watch any like prosperity, word, faith, hipster, cool kid preacher that I've all mentioned uh, a ton. But uh, of what I've watched, all of this fits, or rather, some of this fits all of them. But you must remember, beloved. This is what we're doing. We're, we're remembering. We're being sharpened by the word of God. We're looking at truth because there's a standard of truth and error, right? What is true? What is error? Predictions of the apostles, the Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you in the last time, scoffers, following after their own godly, ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions. That's exactly what they're doing. Worldly people devoid of the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that leads you to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt, right? Notice the grace there. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Jesus is able to keep you from stumbling. He's able to keep me from stumbling. But it's not a matter of just sitting on the couch and doing whatever. We have to work. We have to do it. But this isn't to earn salvation. This is after salvation. We're, we're produced, we're saved unto good works, right? In Christ, in Christ, in him. His glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, and dominion, authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. You're part of the global church if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, Jesus is better, friend. He really is. And your sin isn't worth it. It might last 60 years, 80 years, but you're going to die someday. And ultimately, you will face the penalty for choosing your own way.
But God holds his hand out and says, repent, turn to me, come to Christ. Don't repent or don't, don't, don't live for yourself, but repent and turn to Christ. And when you do that, you're saved unto good works. I hope this was helpful. I really do. Um, go back and read Jude. Read 2 Timothy. Uh, I mean, read any of the epistles. Anytime a name is mentioned, mo so often, not all the time, but a lot of times, he's calling out. He, Paul calls out multiple different people. But you have to have eyes to see. You have to put on the glasses and say, oh. Now, again, I'm not saying, well, I'm a Christian and I'm just like the apostles. It's not what I'm saying. Although there is God and then there is man, mankind, humans, people. That's it. Right? So the apostles aren't super holy saints. I'm a saint just like Paul was, Peter was, Aquinas, Augustine, Polycarp, whatever. Right? All the way down to Mother Teresa, you know, supposedly, whatever. So... You know, the Roman Catholic Church likes to do structure because, again, they want to add extra things to the scripture. One of the reasons why I'm not a Roman Catholic. Many reasons. Go back and read the scripture. Look and have your eyes tuned and your ears, or eyes focused and your ears tuned to that. I hope this is helpful. Y'all be against the world for the sake of the world. Take care.